Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. Did you read this book? I mean, these guys... Peter, they should call him Wet Socks Peter, open mouth, insert foot, because that's what he's doing most of the time. You know, Jesus is like, I'm going to go die for everyone now. Peter's like, God forbid it. By no means, Lord, you can't do that. That's a bad plan. Where are we going to get free lunch anymore? I mean, we've been with you for three years. We get breakfast, lunch, dinner. It's great. We just hear you teach about the kingdom of God. You can't go. And Jesus tells him, get behind me, Satan. You're not putting your mind on the interest of God. You're putting your mind on the interest of what? A man. You're only worried about your stomach. Jesus, I have to go. I have to die. If I don't die, I can't save everybody. But Peter's like, no, Lord. Get behind me, Satan, he says. That's a revelation from the pit. Because Jesus knew he had to go die for us. It was prophesied from the beginning. You know, in Revelation, there's an interesting verse that says, Christ is seen as the lamb that is slain from, from how long ago? From the foundation of the world. When the world was being made, God went, you know, they're going to be messed up. And you know, some people say, well, why didn't he just make us not messed up? I mean, why did he even let there be sin? Why, why did he give us a free will? But if he, what if he didn't give us a free will? He said, nope, you cannot sin. You must love me. It's a mandatory. You know what he would have created, right? A bunch of robots. I mean, we would have been like, ah, yes, I love God because I have no choice. I mean, we would be forced to love him. So instead he goes, that's not real love. You know, if you force someone to love you. In Arizona, where I'm from, we actually, as pastors, had to get trained to do the weddings, and they taught us. There's a law on the books in Arizona. I think you guys are going to know this is the West because it's called the shotgun law. And we literally have to ask the couples when they're getting married, before we do the wedding, we have to say, is anyone coercing you, forcing you to marry this person? Because back in the days, guess what? There was people that were forced to marry at shotgun point, and they said, you marry or we kill you. And, and, they, and so they passed a law. It's a literal law in the books in Arizona that you must be, as a pastor, ask the people, are you coming to be married of your own free will? Or is someone forcing you to do this? Because if they're not doing it of their own free will, I've actually had to, two weddings I had to stop. In all the years I did weddings, I had to say, I'm sorry, someone's forcing you to do, I, I, can't, I, can't, do your, I can't do your wedding. It's against the law. You can't be for... And the girl was like, oh, thank you. You know? No, seriously. She was like... Because she was being forced. Coerced. Is that real love when you're coerced? You, you will love that guy. You're going to marry... She's like, I don't want to. And it, it came all the way down to like oh, two weeks out when they came to me. And I'm like, excuse me, we didn't have time to do any pre-marriage counseling. I need to go over a few things. And... Um, you know, as we're talking about the things about the Lord, husbands love the wives like Christ loves the church. And I'm getting weird vibes from the girl. I'm like, excuse me, do you want to do this? And she says, no, they're making me. Who's making you? His family. I said, sorry. Called in the, the fiancé and said, wedding's off. Man, you should have seen her face. She was just like, thank you, save you know. And I told him, I'm not allowed to marry you by law. It's just a law in the books, and, uh, you know, you can't, the person has to be wanting to do this of their own free will. Just like you have to, of your own free will, respond to the love of God. No one can make, if I could make you, I would change my whole ministry style. I'd bring out a shotgun, say, you are going to get saved today. Right? Look to the cross now, before I pull the trigger, you know. I mean, if, if it would really work, because of my Sicilian upbringing, I would do it. Man, I'd have some kind of ministry. But you laugh at me because you realize that's stupid. It wouldn't really, that's, that's foolish. You can't make someone 
get saved. But you know, if there was some way I could just tell him in love, this is the best deal you got. I mean, seriously. And really, what do you have to lose? I mean, that's what I would like to go back and tell those Jews that were stubborn about looking at the stuff. Look, seriously, what do you have to lose? You got like two minutes left of life. It's not like it's really quality here. Your, your, your organs are starting to freeze up. You're starting to go into cardiac arrest. You're going to die any second. At least fall on the ground with your head laying that way so that you can, you know, maybe with the last involuntary or voluntary muscle movement, you get your eyeball to go. I mean, here, let me turn your head for you. <laughs> you know, if, if we could help them somehow to not be so stubborn. I don't know. Do any guys got a good idea how to help someone who's stubborn? To not be so stubborn? It's hard, isn't it? It really is. It's the... But if we could just say, look, it is worth it. I mean, this is the best thing. And, you know, I'm amazed that in this world... How many of you were alive when Amway came out? Do you recall? Because I'm sure some of you ran into some zealous Amway at. I mean, they're still out there. And they're still going. This is what amazes me. Once you run into one, they want to convert you. Buy our soaps. Buy our so and they got good soap for the laundry anyway. I know, my wife still calls up the same guy. We know Steve. Steve, are you still doing Amway? Yeah. He always wants to sign her up. She's like, I'm not really a good salesperson. I just want to buy the soap. You know? But if I could get the Christians to be excited as, about the gospel, about forgiveness, the feeling of being that joy of our salvation, as excited about that as the people of Amway are about their products, I think we'd have more in attendance. Because people would want to check it out. You know, truly, the, why do people check out Amway? You see the person selling, they're like, they are into it, man. This thing's revolutionary. This will change your life. This is the best soap ever. You know? And I mean, they're just so sincere. They're, just, they're into it. But the Christians are like this. Yeah, I'm saved, so what? You might want to try it. I don't know. Probably not your thing. <laughs> Wrong! This is a thing for everybody. Everybody should have this hope. Everybody should have this sweet peace that you get everlasting life. That you get your sins washed away. That you get God's Spirit as a gift to, to be with you. Wherever, the Bible says His Spirit. Jesus said, I won't leave you. I won't forsake you. I don't leave you as orphans. He says, I'll send my Holy Ghost, my Holy Spirit to you, and He'll lead you. He'll guide you. He'll comfort you. How many of you guys know the comfort of God's Spirit? I mean, there's something about His Spirit. He can comfort us when no one else can. His spirit can comfort our spirit inside. Man, there's times we need it. And we should be able to tell people, like, just with love, hey, seriously, man, this is the best thing. This is better than Amway. You need this. You need to look to the cross so you can, and if they go, well, well who are you? I'm just a fool he uses. Don't worry about that. I only got chosen because God just has a funny sense of humor. But if he could save me, guess what? See, this is the best part. I can with all confidence tell you, if he could save me, I look around and go, you guys are all easy. Like, no problem. And that gives me great comfort. That, that makes me go, oh, that's why you picked me, right? So like when I make a goal, everyone goes, it wasn't him. Pretty sure there's a really big God if he could do that. Whenever the, whenever the Lord does some great thing, people don't go, well, it's Izzy that did it. <laughs> they go, it's got to be a really big God. I mean, I'm sure of it. There's a God in heaven if Izzy's on the team. And you know what? I get the privilege to say, amen. I'm so glad that I was at least, I mean, there's been a few areas I had a little stubbornness. I won't say that too loud. My wife might hear we always joke, I'm, I'm not stubborn, I'm persistent. She's German, she's stubborn. I'm, I just, it's a quality those Germans like boast in, you know. We are stubborn, we will get it done. I, I said, right? <laughs> Anita, see, she's like, we will. <laughs> but you know, I want you to know, 
I want you to know, like in this, let's be at least a little excited about the good news that we have. So people don't go, oh, yeah, I've met some Christians. They're a real downer. I mean, their whole message is, they're, they're not really into it. They, I don't think they really think their product's worth anything. Because we ain't selling. We're giving. But, but some people treat the gospel like it's got cooties or something, or it's bad. And no wonder the people aren't, aren't wanting the, the salvation, because they're not getting to hear the sweetness. They're, they're not getting to hear, how, how good did it feel when you found out total clean slate all good starting over we got a clean that's a great feeling that's better than anything that i know down on this earth and yet the christians don't tell people about it why don't they deserve to get to feel that feeling too the joy of their salvation don't they need to feel that forgiveness that cleansing that complete cleansing sure and that that's a joy a joy beyond all joys. That is, that's really what it's about. Well, listen, next week, Aaron's going to be sharing about Ananias and Sapphira from the book of Acts while we do our family reunion. So pray for our family. I'm going to try to be one of these pastors. I, I'm repenting. I went five years without a vacation. I'm going to not do that no more. I mean, I'm just going to try to, you know, I don't want my kids to grow up going, yeah, my dad was a minister. We never did nothing. Because I hear this from other PKs, pastor's kids. That, you know, what a bummer. And I, I don't want my kids to ever have that. I want to, like, say, okay, let's do stuff as a family and, and set a good example. So next Sunday does not mean don't come to church because I'm not here. It means come and help extra because you're going to need extra help. And, uh, and, and it'll be good. I know. He, I get to already hear the preview of what the Lord's laid on his heart. And that, it's a, if you haven't read it in, the, in your bulletin, tells you read ahead for next week. Acts chapter 5, right? You're going to be doing so chapter 5, and, and the story of Ananias and Sapphira. And it's a real, it's a real heart check, you know, that story. It really, it really is good for your, for your heart and keep you on track in the Lord. So, so just come out, support Aaron. Bring some friends that need some encouragement in the Word. And let's, let's, let's be a little more excited about the gospel. More than the Amway dudes, okay? And let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for your Word. I just give you thanks, Lord, that you're so kind to get my son-in-law, Robbie, and my daughter, Joy, back safe from the mainland. I thank you, Lord, for the offer on their house this week, and I pray it will continue to go through, that they can sell their house on the mainland and move all, the move back here would just go smooth, Lord. Pray for their dog, that you get their dog over here safe on Wednesday or Thursday, whenever it's coming. And... Uh, and I thank you, Lord, that you're just so kind that I can have my family together and, not, and, and my family in Christ here. So thank you, Lord, for your kindness. Thanks for getting Auntie Jen and all of the clan from Hilo safely this morning, and Caitlin, and Lord, just thank you for the, the ones that you bring us together in you. So fill us now with your peace. Fill us with your sweet spirit as we go from here to supply all that we need. In Jesus' name I ask. And everyone that agreed said... Amen. Would you stand with me? We'll sing a closing song and let you go in the joy of the Lord. Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo and God bless.